Hi, if you're a first time home buyer, I've put together this ultimate home buyer's guide to help you understand roughly the 11 steps that you need to take in order to get pre-approved and close on a house. So step one is going to be understanding your personal financial situation. What that means is you're going to look at your total amount of income that you and your co-borrower, if there is going to be someone else on the loan with you, how much you bring home each month. Now, lenders are actually going to look at the before your, your uh, deductions, but for the budgeting purposes, you want to look at your bring home, and that becomes your total income. Then from that, we're going to look at your outstanding debt, so your credit card payments, your um, car loan payments, your student loan debt. And if you have student loans, even if they're in deferment, lenders are going to take a portion of that outstanding debt and calculate a payment. They're going to use a number, either a 1% or a 0.5% of the outstanding balance that becomes your monthly payment. So we're going to add that. Plus, we're also going to add the for the for the housing payment, estimated taxes, estimated insurance, estimated homeowners insurance and mortgage insurance. And then you want to add in an HOA if there's going to be one and also uh, some maintenance costs. So when you add all of those together and divide that by your monthly income, that becomes your debt to income ratio. So your lenders are going to look somewhere around 35% for your housing payment, 35% of your total income, and then 45% of your total debt uh, added together. That is your called your DTI or your debt to income level. So you want to try and keep yourself under 45% and have some extra cash flow for investing in retirement savings. The next thing you want to do is you want to look at your credit report. Now, there's a number of ways you can look at your credit reports. Most credit card companies will give you a free credit report. Uh, also, there's an annualcreditreport.com. You can get a copy of your credit report. Credit Karma, can, you can get that from there. But you'll look at those and you want to make sure that everything is correct. And if there's any errors, then you want to work with the credit bureaus, follow disputes, um, talk with them to try and get those things corrected. If you need help on a professional credit restoration company, just give us a call. We're here to help you with that as well. Now, your credit score needs to be somewhere above 600 for, the, for a traditional mortgage. Uh, conventional mortgage, you're going to need above to be a 620. And if you're putting very little down, you probably want to be above 700. But there's a lot of different programs. You'll need to talk with a lender to find out which one works best for you. But ultimately, the better your credit score is, the easier it is to qualify and generally the lower interest rate that you can obtain. The next step is savings to three savings for your uh, new home purchase. So now I wouldn't uh, advocate waiting to, until you've saved 20% down. I mean, that's crazy in this world. Uh, that would the home values are going to increase faster than you can save 20%. But um, you can get a conventional loan for as little as 3% down, an FHA loan for three and a half. VA is no debt money down. USDA is no money down. And then we also have down payment assistance programs as well. But you are going to have some closing costs. That's one thing a lot of people don't uh, take into consideration is that you have a down payment and you have closing costs. Closing costs are going to range from 1% to 6% of the total loan amount that you obtain. So start saving for that. And as soon as you have several thousand dollars available, you might be approvable for a zero down home loan. Give us a call. We'll run those numbers for you. The next thing is get pre-approved for a mortgage. Now, a lot of clients have come to me and said, oh, I'm already pre-approved by XYB Bank or uh, Pocket. Um, but what happens is those companies will give you an approval letter without even providing uh, or without you even providing any documentation. If you don't provide documentation like pay stubs and W-2s and tax returns, then there is no way a lender can pre-approve you because there's too many variables there. So make sure that you work with a lender that's going to request your documentation so that you can have a full pre-approval. Full pre-approval means all those things have been verified and the lender knows for sure they can do your loan. 
that puts you in a much stronger position so that you can go out and negotiate better on a home. Many home sellers won't even take a pre-qualification letter from a company that hasn't verified your documentation. The next thing, the next step is to set up your home criteria. So you just want to kind of think about what kind of home you really want to look for because there's so many different types of homes. How many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, location, is it near your work, um, you know, does it have a creek view, what, or what is it that you really want out of a house? Kind of be a little flexible because there's not too many homes available in this market today, but you want to kind of nail down what kind of home you want to look for. The next thing is you want to find a reputable real estate agent. My Here's a pro tip. Never go to the listing agent thinking that you're going to get a better deal from the listing agent. That is completely wrong. The listing agent has a fiduciary responsibility to sell the house for the seller for the maximum amount that they can sell the house for. They're working for the seller. They're not working for you. A buyer's agent, a realtor, someone that represents you as, the, as a buyer, it, their responsibility is to negotiate the best price for you. So always go with a uh, buyer's agent as your protection and uh, someone that's representing you. If you need a great referral, we work with some of the best in town. So give us a call. We'll, we'll hook you up. So then you want to begin your home search. Um, if you're working with a great buyer's agent you, and you've given them your criteria, they can set you up with what we call a... Um, a home search criteria and they will send you homes as soon as they come on the market. The MLS or multiple listing service has a system where it automatically will do that for you. And then the reason that you want that is because sometimes it can get very competitive. So if you if the home goes on the market as soon as it hits the MLS and it's immediately sent over to you, you like it, you call your realtor, you go in and you make an offer uh, and then this could be your perfect home. So after you've uh, set up those tours, you're going to start looking at these homes. You're going to go out and tour homes. Um, you'll go to open houses, uh, but probably most likely your realtor will set you up with two or three homes. Hopefully there's many that available and you'll go out and look at these homes on, with the realtor. Now you'll tour, tour around all the outside of the house. You'll look at the inside. You'll look at it very closely. Take your time and make sure that the house is in good enough condition for you and that you like it and you like everything about it. Drive by it in, during the day and during the night. And sometimes you may even want to take a test drive during rush hour if you work far away to see how long it's going to take you to get to your work. See if that's going to work for you. But you tour the houses and then finally you found one that you like. So if you really like the house, then you're going to make an offer on the house. Making an offer means you write a purchase contract and you give the seller two things, an option fee and the earnest money. An option fee is a small fee that you're going to give away right then. You're going to write a check or send a wire and the sellers keep that. That allows you to take the home off of the market so nobody else can make an offer during this time and you have the right to inspect the home and make sure that it's really the house that you want. You're gonna hire a property inspector. I highly encourage that. It's not required, but I highly encourage you get a property inspector to take a look at the house and make sure that all the mechanicals are in good condition and they'll write a report. You'll view the report. Don't sweat the small stuff, but if there's big things, you might wanna have those ask for the seller to repair those for you if you can negotiate that and your realtor will will uh, advise you on that. So you make the offer, you get it accepted. Congratulations, you're not through yet. So you get your offer accepted, then you provide your lender, your purchase contract, and your lender will start the loan process. You'll sign some um, digital docs in most cases, and then you'll order an appraisal where the appraiser will come out uh, and visit the property and make sure that the home is worth what you're actually paying for it. In the interim, your documentation is going into the underwriting department. The underwriters are going to review it, make sure that everything looks good. It's very common that an underwriter may ask for some additional documentation, so don't be too worried when the, if your lender asks you for additional documentation. So you'll get that additional documentation, and in the interim, the title company has done their work and pulled title. 
title report just basically is a report that shows that if there's any existing liens on the property, uh, if it's been properly sold, if it's registered, and there's clear title, meaning that only one person is involved with are, are the sellers um, are able and willing to sell the property. That all comes together, and then that all goes into the underwriter for a, what we call a clear to close. The underwriter will review all this paperwork again and issue the clear to close. That means that you're pretty much done. The next thing is that you're going to go to the closing table. The closing table is where you will go in with your realtor most usually, and you'll sign the official loan documents. Uh, get your fingers ready because there's a lot of pages to sign. So you'll sign all of these documents and um, the title company will notarize them and then they'll send them back to the lender. Now, in our case, most of the time, uh, if you're using one of our better lenders, you don't even have to wait for what we call a funding number. You get your keys right then if everybody's signed. But most of the time, a, a lender is going to require a funding number, which takes a couple of hours. They'll issue the funding number, and then the house is yours. You're all done. So happy journey to your home ownership. If you have any questions on any of this whatsoever, or if you'd like more details, please just give us a call. If you'd like to get a quote uh, for your home approval, I'm here to help you. We'll make it as easy as possible for you. Have a great day and thanks so much.